Hello and welcome to Technology Moment. In today's video we're going to be showcasing the Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K, a product that we recently acquired and we have been testing for a couple of weeks. In this video though we're just going to show you the initial setup, uh, the unboxing first of course, what uh, comes in the box and then the setup in your TV and uh, like walking you through the process. When we open it up we find this neatly organized uh, package Firstly we have the uh, power brick, then we have the device itself, that is the Fire TV, the manual of course, and the cable that powers up the uh, Fire TV either via the USB port in your TV or the power brick, and this is sort of an adapter, an HDMI extension more than an adapter, in order to better connect your Fire TV to your TV. And lastly this is the controller. Uh, we have these uh, little batteries which are for the controller. So we start unpacking everything. This is the controller. It is uh, uh, pretty nice looking and it feels good in the hand. And this is the Fire TV itself. As you can see it is a properly sized device. It's not very big nor is it very small. The only problem we see is, is the, the way it connects to the TV. That's why it brings an, an HDMI extension. This is a power brick with its uh, specifications, just for you to know exactly the uh, wattage it needs. And as we were saying, the construction, even though it's pretty solid, is not very logical. That's why they include this uh, HDMI extension, which is much more flexible than the device itself, which the device is not flexible at all, so it would be hard to connect to the TV in certain situations. And lastly, this is the micro USB uh, cable which powers up the Fire TV. Okay, so once we connect the Fire TV to our HDMI port in the TV and we give it energy either via your USB port in your TV or via the power brick, we just click the home button in the controller and uh, the configuration or the setup will start. You hit start and then you have to choose your language. In our case, we are looking for Spanish, Mexican Spanish, which is the closest type of Spanish that we uh, have. And this message indicates that the USB port in our TV is not compatible and it does not bring enough energy to our uh, Fire TV, so it suggests that we connect it to the power, uh, via the power brick. So we go ahead and restart the device and press start and continue with the setup where we left off. We pick again the Mexican Spanish and now the Fire TV does not show any warnings. It says that the device is connected successfully to a wireless network and that now it's downloading the latest software which at the beginning it was a little bit odd that it said that because we had not uh, told the Fire TV what our Wi-Fi connection was, what our password was, so that was a little bit weird, but then our theory uh, regarding this is that uh, when you buy the device via Amazon, which most likely everybody will do so, then it starts to recognize not only your account but uh, everything associated with it. For example, I've got an Amazon Echo Dot and an Amazon Echo Show, which were at a, at a certain point connected to this Wi-Fi specifically, so that's how the Fire TV knows the Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi password. Now what it is doing is downloading a couple of um, software updates and installing them. Finally, it just gives us, uh, welcomes us with our name, which uh, kind of proves our theory that uh, given that we bought this Amazon uh, Fire TV through Amazon with our account, it recognizes that it's and it's like pre-configured, pre-set up to our data, our general data. So we just say, OK, accept. We are going to uh, set the device with this account and we proceed to the next step. OK, now it says that it's looking for some backup copies as we have never had a TV, a Fire TV before. It doesn't find any. And now it just gives us a little bit of information that the device, the Fire TV, is focused on giving a family experience and we're gonna see just ahead what, what they mean by that. Uh, we choose the brand of our TV. In our case we tried to find the brand of our TV which is not very common. It's, it's called Kaixun which is a smaller brand. 
but we managed to find it which is really cool because it means that they have a huge database of TVs. Here we find it and so we select it and now the Fire TV will try to set the extra buttons that come with the in the controller for audio to be configured with our specific TV so just making sure that we can uh, increase and lower volume with our Amazon Fire TV controller instead of having both the TV controller and the Fire TV controller so it just says try uh, try lowering the volume increasing the volume and if the TV responds just say yes here so that's what we do it, we're just using the Fire TV controller at this point and it works and here it just says that the control uh, the controller is uh, set up properly with the TV. It asks if we want an Amazon Prime Video um, free trial. We say a 30 day free trial and we say not now. And now uh, it gives us a little bit of uh, information about the new uh, features that have been included in the last software updates. The first one is a redesign in the uh, general menu uh, the second one is a more flexible search feature and last but not least uh, they inform us of the new profiles the customizable profiles that we have similar to what we uh, can have in our desktop uh, computers uh, where we can log in to one profile and have different accounts and different apps or different programs installed within that profile so that's quite helpful if you have more than one person that's going to watch content in this Fire TV. In my case, it comes uh, pre set up with my own account, with my own profile. So I just go ahead and edit. I decide to edit one. I'm not going to add another one. Just edit the, the one that comes with the Fire TV with my information. And we can seem to only uh, be able to edit the profile picture. So I just go ahead and select one. I could edit the name too but I'm just gonna leave it as is and I'm gonna just click save and that's about everything I can edit from the pre setup profile and now what we have here is actually the interface itself the raw interface that comes with the Fire TV which as a first impression is quite good looking I really like how it's organized it's it feels a little bit more premium than other devices that we have been using and so that's a very positive thing Our general experience with the Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K has been quite positive. However, we feel it's important to tell you first about the shortcomings or difficulties you may encounter. Although the device says it's 4K as its name indicates of course, you must ensure that your TV is, is 4K of course but also has HDMI 2.0 and HDCP 2.2. The former is the HDMI tech version and the latter HDCP 2.2 is a copy and content protection standard used by the movie and TV industry. It has been the standard since it came out in 2014 so you most likely have a compatible TV by now. We tell you this because our TV is 4K from the brand Kaixon and we weren't able to play content in 4K. We tested the Fire TV in a 4K monitor through HDMI 2 and in this case we were able to see the 4K option in the menu as well as playing the content without any trouble. This means that if we had bought the Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K in order to take full advantage of our TV we would have been quite disappointed. As a last suggestion if you bought the Fire TV and are not quite sure if it works with your setup in 4K then try every HDMI port in your TV just to be sure. Now regarding the general experience and everything else which is positive we can confidently say that we were pleasantly surprised by the capabilities the Fire TV offers. We found a very complete experience that even though the Amazon apps and services are highlighted over others they were still easily searchable and usable and it made us like it a little bit more than the Roku which we also really enjoy using. A great advantage that we noted was that we can see an app store reminiscent to what we have in our mobile devices. This is mainly because the Fire TV's software is based on Android. 
The possibility of installing VPNs as well as a wide offering of apps and channels of free or paid content make the experience of using one of these devices more than fine for the majority of users. Regarding the interface, it looks really premium, where we can see a clear inspiration in the Apple TV kind of look, which opts for elegance as its trademark. We also found a balance between customization and simplicity, where the more superficial user will find it just okay, but the tech savvy will also do so. And finally, the responsiveness of the whole interface completes the very pleasant experience of using an Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K. So I hope you really enjoyed this video and you found it really helpful. If you choose to purchase the device showcased in this video, please do so with the link in the description. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.